Whenever I think of Ultraman, one of the first things that comes to my mind is how Ultraman Tiga was brought back to his feet in his finale by the willpower of kids around the world. Because they really believed in him, and together they were able to defeat a Lovecraftian terror. And not only that, but years later in the Ultraman Dinah film, those same kids that helped Tiga that fateful day grew up and were able to help him once more alongside a new generation of kids to bring Tiga back to life to help Ultraman Dinah. Hello, welcome back to Tiger Drop Films. If you're a returning viewer, then thank you for coming back. And if you're new, then I hope you stick around. And today I have a video over Ultraman. Now, I'm no stranger to the Ultraman franchise when talking about it on this channel. I have an entire playlist full of Ultraman videos. But today, I want to dive into a little bit on what makes Ultraman so unique. The concept of the character, his purpose, and what really makes him stand out among other characters and his legacy. Ultraman is a character embedded with optimism, hope, and promise for the future. The Ultraman franchise is ultimately a timeless story, one that can be reimagined year after year because what is unique about the Ultraman character and the concept behind him is that we've had so many new versions of the character over the span of almost six decades. Additionally, what's really unique is that there's not one single secret identity behind Ultraman. And what I mean is that if you compare him to say Western heroes or Marvel or DC, where there's usually just one iconic character behind a mantle, like Peter Parker or Bruce Wayne, when it comes to Ultraman, it's almost always a new character that inhabits the name Ultraman. And I find that fascinating and refreshing because when you go from Ultraman Shell to Ultraman Show, it's always the same general concept of some sort of human character that's either his own identity or he's created by Ultraman. You know, there's different ways you can have the concept of the human host. But what's so unique is that when you go from show to show, it just feels fresh for such a simple concept. I cannot tell you one Ultraman that is exactly the same as another. They're all so unique and varied. Even this year's Shin Ultraman really distanced himself from the original with his own unique twist. And what I mean is that for such a simple concept, there's so much imagination that you can draw from it. And imagination is the key here. Ultraman is part of Tsuburaya Productions, and he was invented by E.G. Tsuburaya himself back in 1966. And the cool thing is that Eiji Tsuburaya also helped create Godzilla. Yes, the big G himself. And I like to think of Godzilla Ultraman as brother franchises in a sense. They're both tokusatsu icons that pioneered their own paths and their own respective rights. With the Godzilla, so many new kaiju were created and so many famous Japanese films. And with Ultraman, he spawned the idea of a tokusatsu superhero. As after Ultraman, we get the likes of Kamen Rider and Super Sentai, each of which have created their own very interesting franchises that have equally evolved over the years. But when it comes to what makes Ultraman so distinct all these years later of all these other franchises, I like to think of it this way. So the Ultraman franchise is all about positivity and good human nature and, and a promise for the future and what tomorrow may bring for everyone. And what I find so fascinating is that when you look at Eiji Tsuburaya's career, right? I remember reading that one of his biggest inspirations growing up was seeing the original King Kong. Eiji Tsuburaya was so mesmerized, so fascinated by King Kong and the special effects and the story. And from the moment Tsuburaya saw that film, he was inspired. And years later, he'd get into the Japanese film industry. And then I'm sure you know the story of the original Godzilla and how you can truly see how King Kong inspired Eiji Tsuburaya in developing the effects where he eventually created Tokusatsu, the iconic man in a suit, suitmation. And whenever people in the press just call it men in rubber suits, I always roll my eyes because it's not just men in rubber suits, it's much more than that. 
It's a genuine combination of special effects, fantasy, and real-life imagery, and that's what makes tokusatsu so gripping to me. And as someone who grew up with Godzilla and King Kong, it was so cool to get into Ultraman a couple years ago, around 2019. Because it was truly like discovering another part of Eiji Tsuburaya, his other franchise, his other creation. And Eiji Tsuburaya would go on to create other iconic creatures, such as Rodan, Anguirus, bringing Mothra to life from her novel, and what's really cool is that he got to bring his inspiration to life, King Kong himself, and have him fight Godzilla. I mean, that was just fate doing its best work, you know what I mean? It's just so awesome that Superman got to have his own creation fight his inspiration. It's so cool. And of course, Superman would make many other tokusatsu features for Toho, and eventually creating his own company, Subaru Productions, in the mid-60s. And the first show he created was a tokusatsu one, bringing tokusatsu to the television, which was unheard of at that time, besides, obviously, reruns of films. And this tokusatsu show designed for television was called Ultra Q. And it's a brilliant show, filmed in monochrome, and it brought a team investigating mystery and sci-fi horror for viewers everywhere in Japan, because by this point, more people in households were having televisions. And the beauty is that Eiji Tsuburaya created so many unique kaiju and aliens and other creatures for this show. And this brings us to Ultraman in 1966. What I find so fascinating and beautiful is that Tsuburaya created all these monsters. And he knew that he had to create something for kids to be inspired by. Someone to light the way in the darkness. A character... A hero that can stand up against all these monsters and aliens that represent our fear of the unknown. That uncertainty of the future. Or in other words, for all the destruction that Godzilla represents, there's also an Ultraman that represents the good of humanity. A reason to live and not just dwell on our mistakes that have caused these monsters. Ultraman is a way for us to improve. As we see in the original show, there's a theme of Ultraman leading humanity to fight our own battles and fix our own mistakes. And just to be better. To be strong enough to help others. Because the concept of Ultraman is not just a hero who swoops in and fights all of our battles for us. He's the one who's supposed to improve humanity. Because he is no god. Instead, he's just a man. A man trying to help his friends and people he doesn't even know, as in inspiring others that just see him in his actions when he's fighting these creatures, these horrible monsters. And while there definitely is some religious connotation given to the concept of Ultraman, such as a specium ray looking like a cross, and some of the imagery throughout the decades of the series, I do believe that Ultraman is very consistently portrayed as just the embodiment of the human spirit, something that can speak to all cultures, that idea and famous folk tales of a hero that rises up to help the people. But Ultraman is also a franchise that has never forgotten the basics of a superhero, as in that it's kids that truly look up to these guys. I think it's very important for a superhero franchise to remember the important aspect that, at the end of the day, superheroes appeal to our childlike wonder. Because one thing I noticed throughout many different Ultraman shows is that you'll see adult characters have the same fascination and awe-inspiring wonder that a lot of kids have. And I even noticed this with myself, because I really got into Ultraman with my youngest brother. And over the years, we've watched different Ultraman shows together. And it's just so fun having this franchise to connect to him with. And being able to see how Ultraman is reflected in a child's eyes, uh, as well as my own adult eyes, it's just been very uh, eye-opening and uplifting. Because for all the problems that the world has, the fact that the Ultraman franchise has consistently showed that humanity can be better 
and for all of our flaws, there is still no reason not to love. If there's one Ultraman song that I think really encapsulates this description, it would have to be the song called Ultraman Love for Children. And Ultrafan here, his channel has a really good tribute video with that song, you should check it out. But I think that song really does a great job showing what Ultraman's really about. So the many different Ultraman are truly timeless characters, with their own unique battles and foes and uplifting stories, along with uh, somber stories as well, because life is really bittersweet. And one thing I find truly beautiful about this fanbase is that everybody has their own favorite Ultraman, and I usually see no like arguments between which is better among fans, instead just people sharing which Ultraman they love, and just appreciating our favorite Ultraman heroes. And I think that's really heartwarming. When you look at the current Super Ab productions today, I'm just so inspired by what they're doing with the character, with so many different versions existing at once and even crossing over. And when it comes to their stage plays and their programs, they even have an Ultraman foundation. It just fills my heart with genuine joy. And... I would love to work with this company someday and just help them in some way or be a part of the Ultraman team, the family, the community. And I have to mention that I adore that Super Rad Productions is keeping the concept of imagination as a core part of the Ultraman identity. Like when you watch episodes of Ultraman Blazer and you get the ads that are already in the show for Super Aya, they have their imagination programs are doing and it's just about creativity and inspiration and I think that really and I think that really is what E.G. Super himself would have wanted because he was the guy whose imagination was blown away and uplifted by King Kong and I think that really shows that special effects from monsters to heroes can really capture people and it's something that can really transcend all barriers and bring people together for just the appreciation of entertainment, storytelling, and all around just cool visuals. And while E.G. Tsuburai himself was only around for the first three Ultra shows, including Ultra Q, it's really beautiful how his family has carried on this franchise, this beloved piece of art. And you can see his ideals of creativity and imagination and pure sincerity being true in all the new creators that have been brought into his franchise. Like if you look at all the new modern shows, a lot of them have the same development team that switches on and off, but it's so cool that these group of creatives are able to come on and create so many new versions of Ultraman. And I just find that so inspiring. Because in our world where there's a lot of discussion around content and the current state of media and how there seems to be a sort of drought and sincerity I was so drawn to the Ultraman franchise for what it presented just the stories of people surviving great calamities and I believe it takes a great amount of true creativity to sort of retell very similar stories year after year in a very fresh way like the way that Ultraman Tiga inspires us is very similar to how Ultraman Nexus inspires us, but they do it in such different ways with the same concept. It's just, it's so cool. So in conclusion, I think the purpose of Ultraman is imagination, belief in the human spirit, and why it's important to protect it, and inspiring the younger generations to follow their dreams. That's just a way of summing it up but it's common themes I've noticed throughout the franchise. And no matter what, Ultraman is a celebration of all things childlike wonder. Because no matter how much older we get and as the world becomes more cynical, it's important to remember what inspired us all those years ago. You might just find that smile you've been looking for. I've been Tiger Drop Films and thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Comment below your favorite versions of Ultraman and your memories of the franchise, and share my video if you can. Thanks again for watching, and please stay tuned.